Ready? Sure. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the hydrogen, e hydrogen economy and possibly using ammonia as uh, a hydrogen storage medium. Um, and so I'll start talking about the hydrogen economy and then some of the problems with the hydrogen economy, mainly that uh, there are obstacles for storing the hydrogen. Um, then I will talk about using maybe ammonia as uh, a chemical means to store the hydrogen. And then I'm going to discuss catalyst design. Um, Mike talked about catalysis a little bit last week, so we'll go over a little bit of what Mike uh, talked about. And then how we can apply it to my specific problem for ammonia. And then how, um, some experiments that I do in the lab using ultra-high vacuum equipment. So, um, who here has heard about the hydrogen economy? Has anyone heard of the hydrogen economy? No. Um, so there's a lot of talk about replacing gasoline because it's a fossil fuel. Um, and one possible thing to replace it with would be hydrogen. Um, now using hydrogen, the hydrogen will react with oxygen and it will form water. So the only products coming out of your car are going to be water out of the tailpipe. Um, and there have been, like you could, it's uh, ultra pure water, so you could catch it at the tailpipe and if you wanted you could drink it. Um, and a lot of people talk about CO2 or carbon dioxide contributing to greenhouse, um, or the, the greenhouse effect and global warming, um, but this reaction does not produce a carbon dioxide since it only produces water. Um, and it could be it could be produced renewably. Um, so last week Mike talked about uh, using biomass to create chemicals. Well, biomass. Um, so your grass clippings in your backyard, um, some like trees, uh, they can all be used to create the hydrogen to fuel your car. Um, and there are other ways to also produce hydrogen. So you could take um, solar panels and you can make electricity with them, and you could use that electricity to break the water down um, from your faucet, and you could produce hydrogen, and then that would be used um, to store energy and then to run your vehicle. Um, and then also using hydrogen in a fuel cell, which I'll talk about on the next slide, um, is more efficient than uh, the internal combustion engine in your vehicle. So in your, air, in your car, what happens is you take gasoline, which is highly explosive, um, and you run a piston engine that powers your car. So this, uh, this method is only 30% efficient, so that means that 30% of the energy that you use um, or put into your car is going to be used towards making your car go forward. Whereas if you use a fuel cell and this hydrogen as a fuel, your efficiencies can be doubled. Um, so you get a lot more, um, you use a lot more of the fuel for what you actually want it to be used for. Uh, so in a fuel cell, uh, what you have is you have the hydrogen coming in um, on one side, and it, and if you remember from chemistry, um, for your atom, for a hydrogen atom, you have a proton and an electron. Um, so what happens is that the hydrogen comes um, to the side of the fuel cell and it breaks down, um, there's a catalyst, which uh, Mike talk about, talked about last week, and the catalyst breaks the hydrogen into a proton and an, an electron. And there's a special, a special material in the middle that only allows protons to go across this membrane. So the protons can travel across, but the electrons can't get across this middle layer. So it has to go out and around to the other side. Um, and when it goes around the other side, it creates a stream of electrons, and that's basically what electricity is. So you can use that electricity for anything. You can use it to power a light bulb, as shown in this example. Or you could use it to fuel, your, fuel a vehicle. And then the, the protons recombine with the electrons on this side um, and combine with oxygen, which you can get from the atmosphere. And they create water, and then water is your product from this reaction. 
Um, so the problem with uh, this system and using hydrogen as a fuel is that hydrogen is a little bit difficult to store. So some of you guys in your chemistry class may have been looking at the ideal gas law where you have seen that one mole of gas equals 22 liters um, of volume. Um, so hydrogen uh, at room temperature and at, at we're, atmosphere We're doing that Thursday as a matter of fact. Oh really? <laughs> Perfect. You'll get a little preview Maybe. then. Um, so at, uh, at room temperature and at room pressure, so one atmosphere, um, the gas takes up 24 liters. And hydrogen is a gas, so if you, if you have one liter, so think of your one liter Coke bottle, um, you have 0 0.045 moles, um, uh, or sorry, of moles um, in that gas bottle, or sorry, in that bottle. If you take gasoline, because it's a liquid, um, it has many more molecules. So you have 8.4 mole in that one, one liter bottle. Um, so you have over 100 times more molecules in gasoline. So what does that mean? That means that if you're running your vehicle um, and you put one liter in your car, well, my car um, runs about 300 miles before I have to refill the tank. So if we use um, hydrogen instead of gasoline, that means that um, I can only go um, 30 miles instead of the 300 miles because there are less molecules to run the vehicle. Uh, so we can try to overcome some of those, uh, overcome that problem by a couple of methods. We can try to liquefy hydrogen. Um, but the problem is, is that for liquid hydrogen, you need temperatures uh, of negative 423 Fahrenheit, which is really, really cold. So it takes a lot of energy to make it that cold. And then also, what if you, um, what if it's a really hot day outside, um, then uh, some of the heat is going to go through this insulation and it's going to warm up the, the, uh, the hydrogen and it's going to turn into a vapor. So it's no longer going to be able to stay as a liquid um, and you're going to have to, it's going to waste the energy. So another way that people have talked about storing hydrogen is to increase the pressure. And this is probably another relationship that you're going to learn within the next couple of weeks. Um, the relationship between the volume, um, the pressure, the temperature, and the number of moles, of, or and the moles of a gas. Um, so if you keep the, the, um, the volume the same, and then R is the ideal gas constant, you keep the temperature the same. If you increase the pressure, then you can increase the number of moles in that same volume. Um, so if we want to get an acceptable range of range in our car so we can drive an acceptable amount, say like 200 miles before refilling, we need pressures of about 700 atmospheres, which is a really high pressure. Um, and because it's such a high pressure, you are going to need um, really thick materials, so really thick steel, in order to contain that pressure. So um, people that have made these hydrogen fuel um, cars uh, have included, um, when they include the tanks, these tanks take up a lot of space and are very heavy. And you can see one example where the whole entire uh, trunk of the vehicle is um, composed of this really thick, heavy uh, tank for the hydrogen. 